of course the framework is the main thing, right? Starting out, it can be pretty generic. You're just gonna follow flow. You're gonna go basically from the head, neck, center line, and then down the weight bearing leg using the proportional grid. Indicate where the foot is. So that I would consider to be a, a decent basic framework. Um, from there you can add in the other leg and foot. You can indicate some shoulder and hip opposition. Um, now, what you're looking for in a pose is any kind of dynamism. So the, the first thing that I would look for is basically balance, right? This is primary. And the way that I do that is with the ramrod. <laughs> Just kind of joking around in class and, and I, one day and I said, well, it's sort of like you drive a ramrod from the crown of the head all the way down through the body to the weight bearing leg and if all the weight's on one foot, it should hit somewhere there. Um, now, if the figure is like split weight or something like that, the ramrod will go between the feet. Like if the if the figure is standing and you know half their weight's on one foot and half the weight's on the other foot, it'll be there. But if the figure is going to fall or something, or like they've gotten hit and they're fighting, then it'll shift. You know, both feet will be on one side of the ramrod. Um, that's just a way to keep the center of gravity kind of under control. You know, when you, um, when you look for the opposition of the torso, right, you're looking for things that follow this kind of curve. Um, and depending on the, depending on the pose, that'll change. So you look for the rib cage and the pelvis, right? And Basically, the connective tissue in between can either stretch or compress. And it's sort of like an accordion. Glenn Vilpe called it the accordion. And you can create that by some overlapping arcs. Um, and in certain extreme poses, you know, like if the, if the torso goes something more like, like this, the uh, rib cage can actually slightly insert into the pelvis. Um, and so you'll create this strange overlap situation where the, you'll see the rib cage actually go inside just a little bit and then come out from there. Um, that situation happens with people that have, you know, sort of hypermobility or super flexible if you're doing sort of a, a ballet type pose. Um, it wouldn't happen in most poses, but it is possible. Um, and then when you're talking about the way that the legs connect, typically, um, the weight bearing leg is going to be the, on the hip that's higher up. So usually if you're, if you're trying to construct a figure and make one up, you would kind of follow that rule. It's the rule of the S curve, right? So you're going to create this long S curve from head to tail. 